there comes a time in our life where we need a word from the Lord. I came to this house tonight to prophesy, and I came to tell you that uh, tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. And God said to tell you that today is a day of victory. Today God is going to deal the death blow to an enemy that has been plaguing your life. That has been dogging your heels. That has been riding your back and breathing down your neck. Making your life miserable. And I believe that there are some people that have been assigned to your life uh, just to frustrate you and just to aggravate you. Uh, your day could be going well and it could be going smooth. And somebody calls you on the phone just to sap uh, the energy out of you, to bring that negative spirit on you. But let me tell you something, you don't have time for negative energy. You don't have time for anybody trying to bring you down. Uh, let me tell you something, restoration, you need people who are forward thinkers, uh, people who are positive thinkers, uh, not people who are going to sit and complain, but people that say that I believe that God is getting ready to do something within this ministry in our fifth year, thanking God for his favor and thanking God for his grace, uh, that he's getting ready to move us to the next level. Uh, yeah, God's word says you are going to put something that has has been over your head under your feet. Uh, the salvation that he will show to you today uh, for the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again uh, no more forever. There's going to be some little rascals uh, that you ain't going to see no more. There's going to be some pains in the behinds uh, that you ain't going to see no more. Why? Because God is getting ready to release you from them. Uh, God is getting ready to get you from them because God said I have something bigger. I have something greater. I have something stronger for your life. Look at somebody and tell them something bigger, better, and greater is coming. Oh yeah, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And I don't know what the Egyptians mean to you today, but they mean to me their enemies. It could be sickness, it could be financial trouble, it could be family strife and drum or you. You want to get on somebody's nerve. Huh? Let family problems get in the midst. You want people to come to stir up the church. Huh? Let not there be peace in the home. But I speak peace in the home right now so that you can have a peaceful praise. Huh? when you come to the house uh, of the Lord because God said the restoration uh, is here. God said your hope is here. Uh, you're in the center where you're going to get your blessing. Uh, right dab in the middle, God is going to bless you uh, right where you're standing. Look at somebody and tell them there's a blessing coming my way. Oh yes, so it could be people who are trying, amen, every single day to destroy your life or to attack your ministry. I haven't seen so many jealous pastors and leaders jealous of one another and don't want churches to grow and don't celebrate different moves. I'm here to let you know it's enough for everybody. Everybody's church ought to be filled. There's enough sinners out there that you can go glean. You ain't got to go and bother nobody's folk. You ain't got to go and slip no number to nobody else's member. Let me tell you something. The harvest, the harvest is plentiful. And you ought to go out there and get your own for God's sake. And he'll bless you if you sow a seed. Because if you sow a seed, you will reap a harvest. Look at somebody and tell them my harvest season is here now. Tell them don't get mad at me now. Tell them it's not my fault. It's just my season. It's my season to be blessed. It's my season for miracles. It's my season for deliverance. It's my season for healing. God said, I'm getting ready to do it for you. Give somebody a high five and tell them God's getting ready to do it for me. Whatever it's God's word tells us that today is your day of victory. 
How many know that the devil is opposed to you having the victory? Can't stand a praise report. He hates it when you testify. He hates it when you tell of the goodness of the Lord. Because then he comes after you trying to disturb your spirit and, and trying to disturb your praise. But look at somebody and tell them nobody's going to disturb my praise. Ah, oh, when I walked in here today, I came with a praise on my mind. Some folk look for a special person to get behind the mic. Uh, some folk are looking for a certain preacher to get behind the mic. Uh, some folk wait for a certain wait for a certain singer to get behind the mic. Uh, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus uh, and all that the Lord has done for me, uh, my soul cries out, uh, is there a hallelujah in the house? Uh, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Uh, you ought to thank God uh, for saving you. Uh, somebody ought to give God some praise in here. And after the children of Israel are thrust out of Egypt, Pharaoh decides he has made a mistake and wants them back now. He's in hot pursuit of them. And so for Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. Now Pharaoh is saying, I've got them right where I want them. They're trapped. There's nowhere for them to go. I've got them right where I want them. And most of the time when you hear these words is because somebody believes they have somebody trapped, surrounded, hedged in, no escape. People love to see when you look like you're trapped. You can't move nowhere. You can't move to the right or you can't move to the left. You in a stuck position. People love to celebrate when you're not doing so well. They love it. Your haters love it when you're not moving forward. But the minute you begin to move forward, they act like they can't speak to you because you got a new car or because you got a new house. They can't speak to you and then they, they'll tell you, you acting funny. And they're the ones acting funny. Because the Lord blessed you, and they acting funny, but they gonna put it on you. Look at somebody and tell them the devil is a liar. They believe that they have the upper hand and everything is in their favor. And when somebody speaks those words, it's with a sense of superiority, confidence, and assurance. Sometimes when you're on your job, the supervisor likes to play power games with you. And try to mess with you and amen to get you to a place where amen where you want to lose your character just to tell them off just for a few minutes but don't let that devil trick you don't let them steal your joy you keep on praising god you keep on being nice i'm here to let you know you can kill them with niceness even though they act in mean and devilish you keep on praising god you keep on blessing him why because you're getting ready to come out. Look at somebody and tell them what I meant. I'm getting ready to come out. So when somebody speaks like that, they have a superiority complex. And that's exactly what Pharaoh was thinking. And how many times have you been at the place where it seems like all hell has broken loose against you and you look around for help, but there is no help to be found. And it feels like you are surrounded and the enemy is coming at you from every side. And do you hear that sinister voice of Satan laughing at you with that attitude of arrogance and self-assurance saying, now I've got you right where I want you. I know the devil has told you that. We've all been there. In fact, I'm talking to some people that are there right now. You're my assignment tonight. Because I have the word of God for you and I want to tell you things aren't always uh, as they appear. I want to tell you that there is more to this than meets the eye. I want to tell you that it's all a setup. Because God wants you to know that what looks like the worst circumstances you've ever faced in your life is about to be what will thrust you into a brand new glory. Oh yeah, you're getting ready for a brand new anointing. A new level of faith. 
and power beyond anything that you have ever experienced before. And I know this may sound crazy, but some of you need to thank those enemies for pushing you into your destiny. I wouldn't be where I am right now if it wasn't for my enemies. I'm sorry, my buddies. I'm sorry, my friends. I'm sorry, my pal. It wasn't you that got me here. But it was the frustrations of my haters. The folk who were jealous of me. The folk that said I was too young to have what I had. The folk that fought me when I first started pastoring. And they would pray against me and wanted me to fail. And here I am 20 years later still pastoring the same church. They wanted to kill me, but I'm here to let you know if you put God first, I don't care who tried to come. There were devils that came to the church. There were witches and warlocks that came to the church. There were folk that looked me in the eye and tried to kill me, but I thank God for the Holy Ghost. When you have the Holy Ghost, you ain't scared of no witches. When you have the Holy Ghost, you ain't scared of no warlocks. You ain't afraid of folk that spread dust around your doorstep. You ain't afraid of nobody that's trying to amen, do roots and do root works against you. Look at somebody and tell them, I got the anointing and the faith of God. I have grace. Somebody give God praise. I came to tell you when you're down to nothing, God's up to something. How many believe that God is up to something? God is getting ready to show up and he's getting ready to show out. Just shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, I don't know if you serve the same God that I serve, but the God that I serve is getting ready to show up and he's getting ready to show out. He's getting ready to do some things for me. I want you to know that the trap is not for you, but the trap is for your enemies. God is getting ready to deal with your enemies. God let your enemies think that you were trapped. God made your enemies think that you ain't going to make it. And they begin to celebrate. And they begin to talk behind your back. But look at somebody and tell them God is getting ready to make my enemies cry. Oh yes he is. Oh, all those that were laughing at me, God is getting ready to make them cry. Because they sought vengeance against me. God is saying, I'm going to get them. Don't you worry about it. Because vengeance is mine. Say the Lord. God let your enemies see your struggle. And see your pain. So they would get in the trap. What I'm telling you is this. God is getting ready to take care of your enemies. And God has been using this situation. The situation that you're in. This dilemma. This story to draw your enemies together, to draw them out of hiding. You will find out who your real friends are, but when you get in trouble, when you need help, when you need somebody to come to your rescue, you always find out who your real friends are when you need something and you're in desperate need. But let me tell you something. I don't care who don't help you. My Bible tells me that he's a very present help in the time of trouble. To lean on somebody and say, neighbor, say, oh, neighbor, it's been too long, but I'm getting ready to come out. I've been in the struggle. I've been in the pain. I've had heartaches. I had depression. But God is saying, I'm getting ready to bring you out. Shake your neighbor's hand like you're going to shake it off. And say, neighbor, say, oh, neighbor, get ready. Because our eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men. The good thing, how far your neighbor and tell them it's all good. Tell them it's all good. Whatever you're going through, whatever your problem, God is saying, I'm getting ready to flip the shift and reverse the curse. I wish I had about 20 people that would turn around three times and shout, God is getting ready to turn things around in my face. 
praise her. Who talks about the church? Don't worry about her. Who talks about the leader? God is getting ready to deal with them. But when you come in here, know for a fact that God is getting ready to snatch you out of your present situation. God is saying that things are shifting in your favor. You better get ready. It's the fifth year. The number five. The number favor. Look at somebody and tell them favor is my favorite flavor. It's not chocolate. It's not vanilla. It's not pistachio. But it's favor. And somebody said that favor ain't fair. Favor will get you in the places that other folks said you couldn't get. Favor will have you in a house that other folks said you couldn't afford. Favor I have you driving a new car that other folks will hate us say. How in the world will be able to get it? But my father 